so today marks the two-year anniversary of this YouTube channel. Well, actually, it's the two-year anniversary of when I put out the first video for this YouTube channel. I actually made the channel a few days earlier, but I consider this the anniversary. Right now, the channel has over 35,000 subscribers, and if you had told me two years ago that's where the channel would be, I would have thought you were crazy. So thank you guys for that. This channel would not exist without you guys, without everyone who watches the videos, likes the videos, subscribes to the videos. The channel would not exist. So seriously, sincerely, thank you guys for all of that. Also, I can't believe that two years later we are still speculating Super Smash Bros. Ultimate characters, and it looks like next year we'll still be here speculating Smash characters as well, so that is just crazy to me that the channel has been doing that for this long. Earlier this week, we got Min Min added to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and I will make my after Min Min Smash leaks, rumors, speculation, theories video uh, that is in the works right now, but there is a lot to say. I'm trying to get it done because I'm itching to talk about all that stuff, but there is a lot of content there, so that is in the works. Hopefully, I'll have it done by the end of the week here, or at least at some point this weekend. As for today, I was trying to think of some simple content I could do um, just to mark the two-year anniversary here. And since we got Vault Boy in Smash recently as a me costume, and I'm a big fan of Fallout, I thought it might be fun to give you guys a tour of my Fallout 76 camp. Now, I am well aware that people are not the fondest of Fallout 76 in general. I know the game has had extremely mixed uh, reviews and criticism, a lot of which are very valid. Um, and I personally had to kind of trudge through the base game, to be perfectly honest. The Wastelanders update has actually been pretty good. They added non-playable characters to the game. I actually think it's pretty good, but there's still a lot of base game issues there that you have to get through if you want to really enjoy the game. That said, one of my favorite aspects that they added in Fallout 4 was the base building mechanic, and I was really excited when I first heard about 76 because I'd be able to build bases and then go online and show it off to people. Um, I actually did a tour of my Fallout 4 base, uh, it was a video I did a while back, so I thought it'd be cool to just show you guys what I'm doing in 76. I figured with Vault Boy getting into Smash and Fallout now actually being a part of Smash, which I am shocked about, I never thought that would happen, um, it might be a good time to just show you guys my camp in Fallout 76. All right, so this is my camp, like I said. Um, I really enjoyed the base building aspect that they added in Fallout 4, so I was excited about it in 76, and then 76 wasn't so well received, and I completely understand why I had a tough time getting through the base game, but um, I have played a lot of it despite that because I am a big Fallout fan, um, and I really did want to build something cool. So this is what I have going on here. Um, I guess first off, I'll show you guys my character right now. This is how I usually walk around. Um, it's a Western Duster, I think is the name of the coat I have, and then a Raider armored, armored Raider helmet or something, um, and the backpack is the Miner's Backpack. Uh, the Miner's Backpack and the Armored Helmet you have to get from, it's called the Atomic Shop, which is basically like their, you know, microtransaction thing. Um, but you can get uh, the Atoms, which are the currency for it, just by playing the game. So I've never actually spent any other money on 76 um, to get, you know, these outfits and stuff. I'll show you guys the location of my camp. Um, it is here. It's right near White Springs Resort, which is um, close to the center of the overall map. Um, so, yeah, it's a good place to have. You can fast travel to your um, camp, so it's good to have it somewhat in the center. You can also fast travel to uh, Vault 76 for free. Vault 76 is up there. Uh, White Springs is down over here. So, you know, it's pretty far away from that. Um, if I need to get to, like, this side of the map, I can go to my camp. If I need to get to the upper side of the map, I can go to Vault 76. Again, for free. You can fast travel other places. Um, it just costs you caps. White Springs also has a lot of vendors. It has a really good um, area to level up and a really good area to stock up on supplies. So um, I just think it's a good area for a camp. A lot of people put their camps here. It also has um, this golf course, which is where I put my camp, uh, which has a lot of flat terrain. So it's easy to build on, uh, easy to, to build a camp on. All right, so I'll show you guys around my camp itself. Um, so this is what it looks like, um, kind of just from in front of it. Uh, this is the main part of the camp, and this part is really just for selling stuff. You can put up these vendor booths, so that's basically just to sell stuff. But this is the main part of the camp. Uh, as you can see, I have this like porch going on here. Um, this thing is like the newest addition. Uh, it's something that took me a while to get. It is a Armco. Um, ammo creating machine or something. Um, basically you can choose a type of ammo and it will spawn that ammo over time which is really awesome. I no longer have to collect ammo for um, my main gun here um, which is a handmade, Junkies Handmade, um, which is a really good gun. 
So this is like this porch area that I built. Initially, I didn't have this little extra part here. Um, I built it because they added companions to the game, or allies, I think they call them this time. Um, and the first one I got was this guy named Beckett, who has a bar. So I tried to build like a bar, um, kind of an Uncle Moe's family feed bag. If you like, you know, food fun and a bunch of crazy crap on the wall, <laughs> that's kind of what I was going for here. Um, but I don't use Beckett anymore as my ally. I got through all the ally missions um, with him and all the other allies, I now have the Settler Wanderer as my ally. She is the hardest ally to get. The other four allies in the game are in set locations. Um, so you can always just go to the location where they spawn and you can get them at your base. But Settler Wanderer walks around the map. So you have to be lucky enough to encounter her to get her as an ally. So I have her here now. I kind of still kept the bar aesthetic. Uh, she plays a guitar, so it's kind of cool. She adds the guitar music here. And I like showing off that I actually did run into Settler Wanderer and was able to get her at my camp, which is, you know, again, a matter of luck. So besides that little bar area that's really just for aesthetics, um, I also have my inside of my camp here. Um, I built like a little living room area with a TV and some sleeping bags and stuff. Um, I show off my collections here. I got the bobbleheads, I got the uh, magazines and stuff. Um, I have some other magazines over here on this. I probably would have a lot more of the bobbleheads and magazines. I think I'm missing like three of the bobbleheads. I'm missing a lot of the magazines. Um, if they had given us these display racks from the beginning, uh, they added those later on, or at least they added that you have them. You have to unlock a lot of the stuff that you build. Um, and I didn't have them from the start, so most of the magazines and bobbleheads I collected initially, I was just selling for caps. Um, so I don't have all the ones I've collected over the time I've been playing. One thing that's kind of neat over here, um, as you can see, this poster has uh, that mining uh, facility there on it. Um, if you look out, it's a little tough because it's foggy, but you can see it right there. Um, so if you look at the poster and that, they're right next to each other. I thought that was kind of cool. And then this painting has a lot of uh, foliage in it. And if you look outside, all the trees have a lot of foliage. So I thought that was pretty cool that those two things kind of fit with the um, what's going on outside here. In this display case, I have a bunch of masks that I got from this event they did recently. Uh, I have a lot of other masks, but these were the cool, like, Halloween creepy ones, so I'm displaying these ones. Unfortunately, they kind of clip through the case, but, you know, it's a Fallout Bethesda game, so it's to be expected. This side of the room, I kind of just made like a, I don't know, hunter's cabin or something with a lot of stuff on the wall, um, a lot of antlers and stuff, and then this bearskin rug. I just thought that looked kind of cool. And one neat thing about this is that I have this... Uh, switch here that I can click and it shuts the garage door so I can shut the door in here if I want to um, I also have a security gate back here so I can shut this one and then it locks and I just thought that's pretty cool to lock down the camp if I want to do that so I got this Vault Boy statue here. Um, again, pretty cool that Vault Boy is actually in Smash as a me. I never thought Vault would have made it into Smash, um, but here we are. There's, there he is. Um, uh, over here I have like a safe. This is again the bobblehead thing. I got this uh, <laughs> porta potty I guess. Uh, I turned that into the, the house's bathroom, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, and then over here I have like the bedroom that I made. A um, bunch of cool weapons on the wall. Uh, one of them is the dragon, which is a pretty rare weapon. Um, some other weapons on here. My character is like a rifleman build, so this is uh, the original gun I kind of went through the game with, I have displayed, and then just some other cool stuff I have. Um, and then I added all these boxes, this is like my stash, and where I consider my character to keep all their ammo and whatnot. And then this bed is something that I bought from the Atomic Shop. It's got Mothman on it. I just thought it was kind of cool. I think this alarm clock is also from the Atomic Shop. Every once in a while, they just give stuff away. You don't even have to spend the atoms that you can earn in the game. Um, I think that one was just a giveaway. So going outside the back door here, I have my weapons workbench. Um, I just thought this was pretty cool looking back here. I added this uh, garbage can with some fire in it, kind of like a smelter or something, I don't know. Uh, and then I have this gun, uh, I think it's called the Fixer. You get it for completing Beckett's quest, who was that ally I was talking about before it was the bar. Uh, it's a pretty good gun and I thought it was cool to display it here. Going a bit more into the backyard here, um, I made this like garden area for the backside of the camp. Um, there's like a scarecrow, I made this spooky thing. I actually had the death claw um, mount thing over the pumpkin head so it looked kind of like the death claw was like part of the body here uh, but it was clipping through a little bit I didn't like the way it looked so I put the death claw uh, head above it there 
like I said, I built this garden around my camp, so I got these corn stalks. Um, I have this little area here that I sort of built to look kind of bad on purpose. Um, it is like a bunch of just random chairs thrown together around like a fire, like just a little cookout is a grill and some flamingos. Um, I put this uh, street light up above there. So there's like a street light hanging out over the camp out area. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then over here we have some tomato plants. I put them up against the wall, which I thought looked cool. And then probably the only uh, thing I actually harvest out here is watermelons. Watermelons heal both your food and your thirst, so they're really useful to grow. I also have the herbivore mutation. You can get mutations in the game. And uh, the herbivore mutation means I don't get any disease from eating like fruits and vegetables. I'm pretty sure that's what it does anyway. So I don't risk any disease eating watermelons, so they're really useful for my character. I'll just show this side of the camp from a little further back. Um, so the, yeah, the garden kind of continues down this way. I put this, I think it's called a yeah, punji board here, just to kind of connect the fence. The fence didn't connect perfectly because um, it's kind of difficult to build these things, especially with the uh, height of the terrain. There's like a hill, so there's like a slope here. So obviously the, uh, the fence here starts going into the hill, so I had to kind of do something to connect them. But I thought that looks pretty cool with the lantern there and everything. And then I just put the basketball hoop there just I guess for aesthetics, I don't know, you could take the watermelons and try to get baskets or something, I don't know. Continuing over this way, you can go back around to the front, um, there's another scarecrow here, and this again goes over to the front of the camp. You can see I have another Vault Boy statue up at the top there, kind of welcoming in any other Vault Dwellers. I have a Vault Girl statue there, and I have another um, grill out here for cookouts out on the, uh, the porch, I guess. Continuing up past the grill, um, you can see I have the jukebox here and I have a sign for it as well. So that's kind of similar to that mining thing um, that I have outside the window. Uh, I just think it's cool when the posters kind of match what you have right next to it. Um, I have this, which is a beer stein display, which you got at this certain event. And I have some beer steins displayed on there. Again, it was supposed to be a bar initially. Um, and then I have a bunch of useful uh, workshops. So I have the workbench for armor, workbench for uh, Tinker's workbench and the chemistry station. I have some um, posters that kind of match with what those are about. This one's like about, you know, defense, and that's where the armor is. This one, um, safety first, I guess it sort of just fits any of them. Uh, medication one over the chemistry workbench, so I thought that was pretty cool. And I built this whole section um, roofed in, but still sort of part of the porch area outside. Um, got this ice cooler. I got these um, just kind of stands for like the tools and stuff. I figured, you know, if you're dealing with chemicals, you might need something to keep it cool. You got this stand for holding like tools and stuff. Once again, I have a Nuka-Cola poster right next to the Nuka-Cola machine. So I thought that was kind of cool. And a punch bowl. So I guess you could take out the Nuka-Cola and make some punch. I don't know. <laughs> So as you can see, there's some stairs here that lead up to the roof. Um, right on the roof, I have the power station for the whole um, camp. So my whole camp is powered by this big thing here. Uh, I built these. It's a little overkill with all the wires and stuff, but I actually thought it looked kind of cool. It's got that sci-fi look to it. So I always try to go in on the Fallout aesthetics. So I thought that was kind of cool. It looks sort of like a, I don't know, crazy Tesla-like um, power machine. As you can see, the roof is all blinky here because, uh, you know, Fallout 76. Um, over on this side, we have the power armor station. These are actually, like, defense um, blockade things, but I just thought they looked really cool on either side of the power armor station. So I put that there, and then I have another um, shelf here and a locker. I guess you could put, like, power armor pieces in there when you're working on power armor. Going back over here, I built this shed up on top of the roof and I did this mostly because there's two other companions um, you can get that don't really fit that like bar aesthetic so when you put a uh, companion in your camp in Fallout 76 or ally in your camp right they call them allies in this game um, you have to like build something for them and that's what calls them to your camp you can only have one at a time so one of them is an astronaut and she has like a computer station so I had her computer up here um, and the other one that I use for this area was a raider who has his own radio station so you build a radio up here so I built this as sort of a, um, I don't know, high-tech little area that connects to, I guess, like a radio signal or something so that astronaut can send out signals and that um, radio station owner can send out signals for his radio station, and this is just their little area. When I have them at my camp, I put them up here. The astronaut woman also really likes comic books, so I have this Unstoppables poster up here as well. On each of the corners, I have these turrets, so I have turrets on Every corner here, you can see uh, Vault Boy again up here, the Vault Boy statue I got going on. Um, you can look down, there's like the bar area again. 
I'll hop back down there and get a little more detailed look at all this stuff. So there's like some bar stools there. Um, I have this little wind chime on the side here. Uh, that's where the settler wanderer sits, and she pulls out her guitar when she sits at that uh, chair. That's what you build for her. Yeah, she's pulling her guitar now. And I just got some wacky stuff going on. I got like this gorilla head. I got this traffic light, uh, the playing cards. So I just thought this whole little area was pretty cool. Heading back down over here, I'll show you guys uh, my trading station. So you can build these vending machines, and this is how you sell stuff to other players. Other players can show up at your camp. So I built these here. Um, built it separate from my camp itself because people like to be able to find that easily. Some people make their camp like three stories and put it up on like the third story of the camp and it's like, I'm just trying to get here to buy stuff. I don't want to look through your whole camp. Um, so I made this this little separate um, kind of shack area uh, and put these vending machines here. I also put some stuff on them to decorate them. Otherwise they look all the same. So I put like this poster here. I got the um, Nuka-Cola clock, which has a cap and you buy things with caps. So I thought that was kind of cool. Got this Vault Boy cutout here. Um, just looking like he wants wants you to spend some money so come on over and spend some money here and again some other posters i put on the vending machines so right now i have them shut off but i can go over here jump up onto the roof and i have another switch that will turn them on the only thing is when i turn them on um it signals people on the map that they can find um the vending machine and i didn't want people showing up while i was doing this video so i'm going to leave it off for now going down this little alley between my vendor area and my actual camp. Uh, you can see the back of it. I got these neon lights, which cost a ton of money in this game, um, just to spell out my character name, Papa Gino's, obviously. So if you ever find this camp, um, if you're playing Fallout 76 and you're wondering if it's my camp, yeah, I put my name on my camp, so you should be able to find that. Over here, I have just like a dumpster here, and then I have this uh, water purifying machine. It gives me purified water. I have this like toilet and old bathtub. I guess I'm pretending we're like collecting rainwater and purifying it. Um, so yeah, that's another thing I can uh, get pretty easily. I get the watermelons, get purified water, and I get my uh, ammo from over here. Let's see if it's full again. Yeah, it's 60 more. So yeah, I never run out of ammo. I just go back to my camp and get it from that. It's a really useful machine. You have to get like full, um, ally with the raider group though uh, there's raiders and settlers were added into wastelanders those are the two groups that show up um when they added the non-playable characters to the game um and you have to like you know get a reputation with each of the groups i'm full ally with the raiders so i was able to get this ammo machine which is super useful i switched the power on real quick just to show you guys the papagino sign when it's usually lit up but again i'm going to shut that off and here's pretty much what the whole camp looks like from the back of it. Um, when I spawn into the camp, I usually spawn back here for some reason. I don't know, the game just thinks this is the front of the camp for whatever reason, so this is where I spawn. Right over here, there's this driving range building. Um, this was originally empty uh, when I built my camp and everything, because there was no non-playable characters in the game. But uh, recently, when they had non-playable characters, this guy Fritz is here. Uh, he's kind of a jerk. He's like a former raider who now wants to be a rich guy and have people like do stuff for him. Um, but he sleeps in here, and the place gets restocked with food that I can steal from him all the time. Um, so that's pretty useful. Uh, and it's kind of cool that I have a neighbor now. Makes the world feel less empty. So I have my one companion or ally or whatever you want to call them at my camp all the time. And then I have Fritz over here, so they're kind of watching out for us, I guess. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, this huge wall and like mountain range back here. Um, spoilers, the Enclave uh, headquarters is like right back there in those mountains. Um, but like there's a lot of ghouls back behind the wall, but the big wall keeps them from ever really coming down here. Occasionally some enemies will spawn and attack my camp, but not too much stuff. Um, there's a lot of ghouls past, that's like a swimming pool area, um, there's another place past there that has a lot of ghouls, but nothing really comes down over here, so it's a pretty safe spot for a camp, besides the stuff that the game spawns in naturally to attack your camp, but um, that's pretty easy to take care of. And then lastly, I guess I'll just show you guys a few outfits my character sometimes wears in the game as uh, pretty much showed you guys the whole camp. Um, so I showed you guys this one, this is sort of my my main outfit or attire that I wear for my character. I think it looks pretty cool. It looks kind of like the um, New Vegas cover guy. Uh, there is a New Vegas like outfit you can get, but I like being a little more original than that. But this looks pretty close. Um, I really like the the helmet with the miner's um, backpack. I don't know something about the like rusty metal of the helmet and the canteen and shovel look pretty cool. It goes pretty well with my handmade gun too. Um, so yeah, I like I like the look of this. This is how I usually run around the game. But I do switch it up sometimes. Um, I will show you guys how I ran around the game originally. 
uh, I got this like my first day playing and I just tried to make my character look as much like me as possible so yeah here he is tried, tried to make him look like me so it's about as close as I could get I could probably do a little better I think my uh, Fallout 4 character actually looked a bit more like me but I, I went for it here um, he's got the hat obviously um, my real name is Brandon I've said that a few times so the B on the jacket I thought worked pretty well um, I wish I could get like a blue hat, but they only have this like green one. There's like a gray one, but it doesn't have the hair sticking out of the back, so I didn't think it looked as much uh, like I generally do. And then I got this Rescuers um, backpack, which just looks a little bit more like a, a typical backpack rather than the Miner's one. Um, so this is how I ran around the game for most of the beginning of the game. I, I looked like this. When I was doing quests for the Settlers, I generally dress in this. I think it's called an Insurgent outfit. I just thought it looked pretty cool, um, and I wouldn't wear the like armored raider skull mask. I thought that seemed a little evil for uh, helping out the Settlers. Sometimes I'd also wear the Western Duster just without the armored skull mask, so yeah, that's what that looks like. And then when I was doing stuff for the Raiders, I would wear this outfit and I would change the gun to this gigantic gauze rifle. Um, it's a junkie's gauze rifle. I have a junkie build character using chems and stuff. Um, so yeah, I got the junkie's handmade for most of the game. I use that, but I have this gigantic gauze rifle and the outfit's called the Stalker's outfit, I'm pretty sure. Um, we got the like tires for like armor on that arm. I thought it looked pretty sweet. I wear the armored raider skull mask helmet thing um yeah i just thought this looks more like a like a raider character so this is my like evil build for my character like i said i have full ally with raiders i'm neighborly with the settlers but it's a slow grind to um build up reputation with both of the factions you have to choose one or the other um at a crucial point in the game sort of but you can still get full ally with both of them it's just that choosing one over the other drops your reputation with one and raises it with the other so yeah, I, I went with the um, Settlers, actually, with the choice, um, just because I was way behind. I was doing way more uh, raider quests to get up to Ally, so I did that. I still consider my character more of a raider. I think Fallout 76 was, like, the beginning of the game made me so angry that... Generally, I play, like, a good guy character, but Fallout 76 kind of <laughs> made me so mad. I went, you know what, I'm going to play a play an evil character this time. Uh, so even though I went with the Settlers for the big, like, choice between the two factions, I actually, at the end... Um, you make this other choice where you decide if you want to share the reward with them or not. And I basically uh, screwed them out of the reward and was like, no, I'm taking all the money for myself. So I felt at the end of the day, I did probably the most raiderly thing I could have done, which was not ally with the raiders, ally with the settlers, and then screw them over in the end. So yeah, that's, that's how I played this one out. And then I guess for people curious, I'll just show my um, build here. Uh, some of this is able to be switched out um so this is what i have right now which is for that junkies handmade um, so i have the commando stuff but i also have all the rifleman perks that's actually how i initially went through the game um and i can switch a few things out here uh i switch out a lot of the agility cards um for stealth stuff if i want to play stealth rifleman um this is sort of like a vats uh I don't know, Vats Commando build, I guess, or something. Um, some weird things, like I have Strength 3. I don't really like Sturdy Frame that much, but sometimes I use um, the full Chemist, uh, what's it called, uh, Traveling Pharmacist. Sometimes I use the full that, which is 3, um, if I switch out my backpack to be a Grocer's backpack, which helps with carrying food. But right now I have Through Hiker on instead of um, Traveling Pharmacy. So I switch between a few different things to have different builds, so that's why some of this is a little weird. Like, I could probably go down to 1 Endurance, I could probably go down to 2 Strength, um, and move those into something else, maybe Intelligence. Um, but this is how I play it here. I have Starch Jeans and Class Freak, because I have a ton of mutations on my character. They're just really useful. Um, and I have Lone Wanderer, because I generally play alone. I don't usually play in groups. All right, well, that's pretty much everything. I hope you guys enjoyed my Fallout 76 camp tour. Um, I can't believe it's been two years since I made the YouTube channel. I can't believe that Fallout is a part of Smash two years later. So it's just crazy. It kind of goes to show we really can't predict what is going to show up in Smash. So hopefully a year from now, we'll have some other crazy stuff showing up in Smash um, and some awesome things to talk about for the channel. Until next time, thanks for watching, guys. So once again... Thank you guys for all the subscribes, all the likes, uh, it really helps out the channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so, or like the video, or leave a comment, whatever you want. Uh, until next time, have a good one.